What's up you guys, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about the top 10 most influential jazz rock fusion players in my life. So that's right, this is a completely subjective list. So before I get on with the top 10 most influential guitar players in my life, let me just let you guys know if you want to become a more active supporter of the channel, you can go over to my Patreon account, which the link is right down there and you can join in as a patron at different tier levels so I hope to see you guys there now I gotta give a shout out to that guy who does stuff who actually suggested this video and in terms of influences I'm going to be talking about different guys that opened up my ear to new sounds different guys who influenced me in terms of the actual technique and I'm also going to be talking about different guys that opened up my head in terms of thinking about music. Now it's not really in any particular order in terms of who's more influential, although number one is definitely the most influential. So stay tuned to find out who that is. So without further ado, let's go to the list. So number 10, Mr. Richie Kotzen. Now this one's a little bit controversial because when you look him up, he you tend to find or you tend to think of him more as a rock player. He's played with some big bands like Poison and Mr. Big. He has a huge discography, mostly hard rock type stuff where he's singing. But he's actually the guy that opened up my ears to start listening to some fusion to the album Tilt, which he recorded with Greg Howe. So this is an album that actually kind of burnt out when I was a kid around either 16, 17 around that, those years of my life and I just couldn't stop listening to that album. And he's definitely a huge influence in general, just, not just the, the jazz rock fusion bit, but a, a musical influence in general. Number nine is gonna be Guthrie Gobin. And this is another guy who influenced me a lot. And, and he actually influenced in opening up my ears a bit further. With Richie, I actually discovered um, the sounds of Dorian with Guthrie what happened is I started hearing more chromaticism, I started hearing the altered scale, a little bit of melodic minor. I already had a little bit of harmonic minor in there, but melodic minor was, was pretty new. And so that hit me pretty hard. It started sounding a little bit more like jazz. And even though he had his album Erotic Cakes, which is a little bit more, um, you could say, more instrumental rock type guitar, I got really influenced through the, the JTC or, or Jam Track Central videos where he's playing to those to those backing tracks, especially that Larry Carlton um, video, which I think came out around 2007. And of course, if you're familiar with my videos, you're familiar with my Sir guitar. If you remember those JTC, those Jam Track Central videos, does it look familiar? Yeah, it's because it's pretty much modeled after the guitar he played. A couple of different things, some different woods, different pickups, but aside from that, very, very similar. Number eight is gonna be Pat Martino. Now, even though I didn't really listen to a lot of his music, I actually believe he influenced me a lot because at the time that I started studying him or studying some of his stuff, I was mainly a rock guitar player. And I found some, some different licks in his style. And I started studying some different books and listening a little to his more live performances. I didn't really listen to a lot of his albums, but I did watch a ton of, of live video footage. And I started to incorporate more chromaticism and more of that 251 type um, phrasing or vocabulary into my own playing. So even though I didn't really listen to his playing a lot, I definitely got influenced by his phrasing. Now number seven is gonna be Scott Henderson. And with Scott Henderson, I'd like to mention also Chris Jurgensen. This is almost like a bit of a mix, a, a, a twin job between these two. I started taking lessons from Chris Jurgensen at Musicians Institute. And while I was taking lessons with them, I was also going to open counseling with Scott Henderson. Now it is at this time that I learned all about how to incorporate different modes, how to incorporate different um, pentatonic substitutions and they have a very similar philosophy in terms of the application of these two different things. Number six is going to be Frank Gambale. Now again, as with a little bit as with Pat Martino, I didn't really listen to a lot of his albums, but I did watch a lot of live footage. And more than that, I started adopting his economy picking and street picking style. And this is something that has definitely changed my playing. 
instead of playing more alternate picking or just doing legato, I've adopted this whole sweet picking, economy picking style. And it's been really, really great for me. Not only that, but he was really easy to listen to when I was starting just jumping from that whole rock scene to the more jazz rock fusion scene. Number five is gonna to be Tom Quill. And this is another guy that influenced me in terms of technique. Now, I've gotten a bunch of different legato moves, not only that, but more chromatic legato moves that I've been adopting as of late. And if you've been seeing my latest, I don't know, improvisational videos, you've noticed that a lot of the legato runs are pretty much Tom Quell inspired things. And not only that, but I also love his phrasing. So a lot of times before I go to play a show, be it something with a jazz band, or even with my band, I like to watch some Tom Quayle videos beforehand, just so I can say, okay, wait, don't go nuts over here with the playing. Sit down, actually control your playing a little bit. Number four is gonna be Wayne Krantz. And this was a really, really big influence, specifically with the Krantz, Carlock, and Lafave trio. I went crazy just nuts listening to him, and his playing really opened up a whole new vibe of playing with different rhythms, a little bit more funky and experimental in terms of rhythm. Not only that, but he opened up a whole new world of scales. He doesn't just use your normal conventional scales and modes. He actually plays with different, you could say, made up scales that you can find on his book, The Improvisers OS. And there's gonna be a link right below to where you can actually check the book out. Number three is gonna be Tim Miller. Now, Tim Miller is an amazing, amazing guitarist has amazing hybrid picking, some amazing legato, very much in the style of Alan Holdsworth, except that for me, it, it sounds like he grabs a little bit more from the contemporary fusion or more modern jazz world, even modern classical music, even that tone that he has. It's very open, very, like I said, very much like classical music. The other thing that he opened my eyes to was to the use of different um, symmetric figures in terms of phrasing when doing um, different um, lines and so his his lines get kind of crazy kind of nuts especially in open situations and so through playing some of his at least some of his solos it opened up a whole new world of possibilities in terms of note selection number two Alan Holdsworth now this is one of the big guys the really really big guys that influenced me in a huge huge way his fluent legato his his almost violin-like type vibrato, his switching his slides from one place to the other, absolutely everything, even those those stretchy chords, those open sounds, very futuristic, very spatial, very much like something that sounds like it's from outer space. And this was definitely an acquired taste. This is something I started listening to Alan Holdsworth when I was around 16. I tried to listen to Alan Holdsworth when I was 16. And since I was in the whole shred realm by, at that time, I couldn't really handle it. But then when I was in college and was able to understand what was going on, I started appreciating a, a lot more. It was definitely a huge, huge, huge influence. And like a lot of the other guys, I didn't really get into the studio recorded albums, but I loved the live stuff, especially live at Yoshi's. That's definitely my favorite concert. I think it's pretty obvious I'm a huge Holdsworth fan. I got me a nice headless guitar. And yes, it is pretty much because of Holdsworth. And it's also because of Tim Miller. And I also got it because of the number one influence in jazz rock fusion. Now, before I go on to who's number one, I'm gonna go through some honorable mentions. And here we're gonna have guys like Bill Frisell and his incredible command of sonic landscapes. I'm gonna mention Andrew Neary, who right now is a huge influence, just the way he can mix all these different styles, some blues stuff, some fusion stuff, some out there stuff, some, some heavier stuff. I gotta mention Laurie Carlton because he's one of the pioneers of the style. Also Robin Ford. I also have to mention Greg Howe, with whom I actually took a couple lessons, a couple of private lessons over at his apartment. Not only that, but the incredible, incredible Sean Lane, the amazing Osnoy, and Alan Hines, with whom I also took lessons over at MI. Now who's number one? I'm gonna have to go with Alex Machacek. Why? Because he was my teacher at MI. Not only did he just teach me normal music stuff, but he actually opened up my head and showed me how to learn. He showed me how to sit down, how to approach learning different concepts. 
you showed me that you sit down, you break apart a concept, you figure out all the different possibilities within that concept, and you figure out different applications. And within that, you start picking out, picking and choosing whichever ones you like. You try them all out just to make sure that you don't leave any stone unturned. And so this is something that's super important to the way that I think about music now and the way that I study music or study in general. And so Alex was a huge, huge influence, specifically throughout two different albums, his Sick album and his Improvision albums, even though I totally got later on into the fabulous Austrian Trio albums. And I absolutely love um, his his duo with Gary Husband called Now, which is just electric guitar and piano. And I absolutely love the way that they incorporated both of those instruments, which just happen to be two of my favorite instruments. All right, so that's it for this video. Remember, you can follow me on any type of social media. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Quick shout out to Patreon Raul Tisse for supporting the channel and helping make this video happen. You can also check out all of my products, like my book, The Art of Scale Weaving, in my box set with the guys from Guitar Tutorials called 10 Modern Fusion Licks. Hi, thanks for watching.